Good morning everybody and welcome back to another film. I'll start by apologising just in the event that the camera hunts for focus a little bit. It's still quite dark out here. Um, it's currently quarter to five I think it'll be now. Sunrise is at half past five and I set my alarm clock this morning for for I think it was three three twenty something like that and I got up at three o'clock so I was really keen to get out and do some photography. So where I've come to this morning is the coast along the northwest, not far from Hesham, and I'm photographing a lighthouse that I've been to before. Currently, there's no clouds above me, which to you hardened landscape photographers will probably sound a little bit disappointing. There's also a bank of cloud over to the east there, which is gonna hamper the sun as it comes up over the horizon. But it's not always about grabbing the best image, sometimes it's about the experiences. And this is a lovely place to be. You can hear when you're silent, lots and lots of birds. You can hear that. Oyster catchers, red shank, and the odd curlew, which is really quite haunting when you hear it. Lovely, lovely sounds. And of course, as, all, as is always the case with the, with the coastline, the lovely smells that go with it. So in total from the van, I have about a 10 minute walk to where I want to be. I've timed it hopefully for the tide to be just where I want it to be and, uh, and I can get reasonably close to the lighthouse. So I'll get there and get set up and uh, I'll see you in a moment. So the sun is now well and truly up over the horizon and I've finished the dawn shoot. It didn't go according to plan sadly and I'll talk you through what happened. So when I arrived, the Hesham ferry was sat just to the left of the lighthouse there and I had to wait until that moved off before I could start shooting but that was the least of my problems. Like I said when I arrived, I've not got any clouds above me so I've no reflected lovely dawn colour on the landscape or the, or the lighthouse. So what I was hoping for was, as the sun comes up before the, it breaches the horizon, you often get some pinks and blues displaying on, on the horizon band. And my plan was to have that lovely pink and blue sort of running through the, the lighthouse, the middle of the frame, but it really didn't work out. On the back of the camera, the images, as I can see, have got a very monochromatic feel about them, but you never know, I might be able to pull something out in Lightroom. Just talking through the settings, so I've got the case 10 stop neutral density filter on. The tide's gone out quite quickly already, um, but the surface of the water had a lot of ripple on it. So I wanted to smooth that out and make it as simple a scene as possible. Exposure time was about a minute and 30 seconds for those of you that are interested. Um, composition wise, you've got the distant Southern Lakeland Fells and you've got a nice shape um, to those mountains that just lead your eye in to the lighthouse on the right hand side and when the light is good it really makes for a lovely image. I'm going to letterbox crop it probably a 617 because um, I think is that that is what works the best with this image but in terms of where do I go now for the rest of the morning I'm going to head back to the van I'll put the image on now that I've just taken head back to the van and hopefully on the way back I might just pick something else out um, some smaller details so I'll see you in a minute.
that was the last of three shots. I've got a lovely image here. It certainly looks it on the back of the camera and I've had to be quick because the sun's getting higher and higher. What I found as I was walking back was all these lovely sand patterns um, that's been left behind as the tide's gone out. What's happening is the sun's getting higher. Um, it's catching the left-hand sides of the ribs of the sand um, ridges and on the right hand side they're being cast into deep shadow so you've got this gold these golden lines on the left hand side and these blue lines on the right hand side so i've set the camera up so they're running diagonally from top left to bottom right through the frame you'll have noticed that the camera is not on the plane of focus so you've not got the back of the camera on a level plane with the ground the reason i've done that is because this lens if i was to point it directly down the, the, the patterns will be too close to the camera and it would lose the effect. Similarly, if you've got them too far away, they become too cluttered and, and just not easy on the eye. Um, they get quite messy and distracting. So the critical distance is where I am now. So what I've done is I've taken three images. The last one was the one where I just put my hand in front of there just to, to, so I know where, to, where, to, where the stack will actually stop. Um, the first image was taken on the bottom third of the frame. The second image right through the middle central portion and the third um, at the top third. So each one of those was the focusing point in Photoshop. I'll stack all those together and hopefully if it looks like it does on the camera now, it'll be a really pleasing shot. So I'll put that on now. So I think that's me done for the morning. I'm going to head back now and get myself a well-earned cup of coffee and relax. But let me know in the comments below what you thought of the images. I think for me, the abstract sand pattern is probably my favourite. But like I say, let me know below what you think of the images. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. And give me those thumbs up if you like the video. Always helps to get those. I'm going to leave it there and say thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.